Guys, you feel lucky and blessed when you get a good mentor in IT industry early on in the career. And same was the case with me when I met Keith. Keith Roberts has been a figure who has inspired me and who is still inspiring me a lot. You can understand his importance by the fact that I created a dedicated video on him on the piece of wisdom he shared with me years back. I'm sure this podcast will bring, bring a lot of nuggets of wisdom to you as far as leadership and management is concerned. I feel you should watch it till the end and I'm pretty sure you'll be a better professional after watching this. So here I introduce you Keith on Tech Talks with Anshu. All right guys, so today we have a very special guest on our podcast Tech Talks with Anshu. Uh ever since I started it I always wanted Keith uh Mr. Keith Roberts to join us on this podcast. because he has been a special person in my career uh, i made a special video on him when I, i i made a video on the best advice i got from my mentor in it and he is none other than mr keith roberts there's a lot i have learned and i hope this uh, uh, this podcast will bring a lot of wisdom to you guys as well so thank you uh, keith for coming to my podcast how are you doing today I financial yes and uh, thank you for the invitation it's great to talk to you I think uh, it's always uh, a pleasure talking to you uh, ever since we met so just to give our audience a background I first came in a United Kingdom onshore uh, assignment uh, as a BI administrator and I was to meet uh, Keith uh, for the knowledge transfer and the training and I think he, you were the first person I met onshore and uh, i learned a lot during that short tenure of 3 4 months which we spent together and ever since then we have been in touch so um, i i always felt that i have learned something new ever you know every time i have met you so thank you so much and uh, yeah i would like you to just give a brief because i think this career which started from 1996 if i'm not wrong and now it's it's almost more than 25 years in it if i'm not wrong so if you could just uh, sum it up i know it's difficult but if you could sum it up in uh, in uh, in few sentences what would that be keith uh, so so basically obviously uh, start uh, i'm welsh so started in uh, probably local government probably i think it was 1981 oh. so i started but uh, then obviously uh, moved into the sort of it world in about 19 sort of 1996 or so um after some early start in another area um and basically grew into i suppose understanding about unix and all of those kind of technologies distributed computer systems and so on and uh, in my early career i was a sort of cobol programmer on a mainframe then into distributed computing then into as i said uh, unix and doing unix administration and then later on grew into management and then uh, left local government uh, went into private industry uh, became i suppose a specialist in uh, business intelligence and consulting um and eventually uh, where we met anshul in jaguar land rover when i was a contractor Yeah. Uh, and then moved into um i think i left and went to the post office to do their sap implementation and then came back into jaguar land rover in a permanent to a permanent role really where we met up again i think so, <laughs> so that's as about my check and pass really and um in in that period as well i did some military service and some territorial army service and stuff so yeah it's been quite a, a check and pass but uh, obviously i've been uh, in jaguar land rover for the last uh, Eight years or so. So I'm in my ninth year, I presume, roughly. I think uh, uh, it's very difficult to sum it up, but you have summed it up so quickly. So thanks for that. And today, I think the topic of this podcast would also be around your journey in IT because of this extensive experience. I have seen people who have worked well in a technical role, and I've also met people who are good in management and leadership role. But I've met very few people who have excelled in both. and you are uh, definitely one of those because when i met you i i used to get afraid of the black screen which i used to call linux i i was a windows guy i never i even i never worked on linux ever but but when i met you and when you started training me it was such a journey and uh, as you brought up the uh, your territorial army uh, service uh, i i must say that uh, i i should i should share this incident although i have shared it in my video but 
uh, it was uh, one fine day when you were about to go and there was a server which was down and I was really nervous because you asked me to recover that and uh, I still remember you came to me and you said uh, Anshul uh, just just remember this is just a bloody server no one is dying no one is losing their life not a single drop of blood is being shed so don't worry at the end of the day it's, we, are, we are not doing something so critical that you get so nervous so that has stayed with me and you you won't believe with how many people i have shared that piece of mm -hmm. wisdom and it has stayed with me so on that note uh, i would i would really would like to set the tone of this podcast around your transition from a technical role into a management role and what steps uh, the audience of this channel and the podcast who are listening to this podcast could take to make that transition very uh, smooth and uh, in a way where they can excel. Because sometimes this happens organically. Uh, when you grow older, people think you now have to wear a coat and manage people and lead and all that. But I want to really understand from you as my very first question, how has this transition uh, been for you? Uh, because for me, when I met you, I know you were a hardcore technical guy who used to work all alone and not love dicta getting dictated by someone. You you just were an independent entity on your own. So how is this all shaped up in your career? Uh, well, I suppose um, if, if I go back to local government, really, um, back in Wales, um, there was um, an initiative uh, moving to management and I was selected as a person that... Um, would join that course. And I learned a lot about, you know, on that course about how to manage people really. Um, but then um, after spending uh, all that time, I spent probably in management about six years in local government. Um, so I learned quite a bit about managing people. But, you know, t as you know, I'm sure as you mentioned, I love technology. Technology is my thing really. And I love to, in quote, get my hands dirty, get involved in technology. And my, my big thing is, you know, how can technology help businesses to be efficient? How can they use that technology to be profitable? Uh, and how they can they, how can they exploit that technology? So I'm always into that kind of thing. So I suppose that moved me into management because, in a sense, I became, I suppose, a management consultant where I was helping businesses to evolve, making use of technology, exploiting it, and helping that and ultimately their profitability. I mean, that's the big thing, isn't it? At the end of the day, businesses are not charities. They've got to make uh, money. So so I suppose um, during the implementation of a social care system uh, in Kamadhanji County Council, um, I became, I suppose, more aware about use of technology for the benefit of others, for the, for the benefit of businesses. And after implementing this technology within uh, Kamadhanji County Council, um, I was offered a role by the actual company where the um, system was acquired. Um, and um, again, I was offered a consultant role where I would go in and um, help them with their technology, really helping the customers they had to, to evolve, exploit the technology and help them implement it in a good way, using obviously the experience I'd gained over the years. Um, but... Um, I joined that company and after about, I think, six or so months, they asked me to become a manager. Um, and I was quite surprised after such a short time that I was being asked. To so did they, did they find any specific quality? Because as you said, you, you were put into a training for people management and you, you were brought into management so early. Do you think you always had some qualities which were required for this kind of role, although you never wanted to? go into that or you were more inclined towards a technical role do you think you had something from the beginning which which helped you oh i mean it's difficult to say i mean obviously you know um well i mean so i know i've got some values really so from my you know from my what the way i was brought up really so um, i was brought up to be uh, humble be uh, grateful um manage people i suppose or deal with people in a very courteous way um and and also try and teach people and you know when when I was brought up really when I I used to go and um, 
help my uncle out and my uncle is a joiner or carpenter depending on and you know he did some training on me I would help him out in the summer months you know doing some sort of woodwork or or that kind of thing and I think that helped me really because it, it helped me understand and work with people from a very early the early age you know as a team because obviously when you're working with a capital you had handle piece, big pieces of wood and you have to do some joinery and so on so I think that probably I suppose set my background really. So I've always, always uh, had, I suppose, a set, I mean, a bit like the Queen who unfortunately passed away a number of weeks ago, um, to, 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 to be very duty bound, you know, and I've been, and when that, when I, um, sort of take on a task, I try and do it to the best of my ability. So I suppose that's something that's been the way I've been brought up, you know, to do things to the best of my ability, to, to, to treat people with respect. Really. And I think probably that's, something um i always try and do and i don't i you know and i think all managers doesn't matter what level from from the ceo in the company or finance director or whatever senior role or even lower level management role you have i think you should um be happy to engage with people have that conversation with people uh, remember at the end again you're just a human being and you need to treat everybody with respect doesn't matter who you are and you also must be you know able to have that conversation with anybody really and be happy to have the communication really and understand that um you know it's it's you need to be humble really and just because you manage to you know get to a senior role or potentially you you still need to be uh, able to have the conversation with everybody in the company and have that respect and i think that's right. very important because you know ultimately without people you know uh, i mean you you see senior executives join companies and the next thing you see is they bring their trusted people with them and yes. why do they do that is because they can't do everything themselves they've got to have people they can trust to do the work because they ultimately you can't do everything yourself and you know there are a number of um as, as i as i go into management i decided to do a certificate in management so that i can understand about hygiene factors and how to engage with people you know about having a development plan and all these great things that are you know but ultimately though you can uh, learn all these uh I suppose, you know, uh, how to be a good manager, but then you've got to try and implement them and you've got to so, have those conversations, really. So I, I wanted to ask you on this, like managing people or leading people, leading a team, is this a skill someone could learn through a course or through a training as you are put into? Or do you think that uh, it is something which should come from within? Is it some? Is it something which you could be trained on? I, obvi yeah, obviously you can be trained on it, but again, you know, you've got to, I mean, with, with every course, Andrew, you know, you, you, you've got to be able to implement it, right? So mm. it doesn't matter whether you go on a um, project management course or if you go on a TOGAF course or a, ma or a management course, you've got to be able to apply those skills. You know, I, I see many people go on probably go on lots and lots of courses but do they actually then implement them and take the the factors away from those training courses and then mold them to work for them? I, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I try. I mean, uh, you know, you said earlier that I, I, I mean, I was fairly good technically, and I'm a fairly good manager. I mean, I don't, I don't personally count myself as a a good technical person or a good manager. Really, I just try and do my best, and I try and treat people with respect. I try right. and bring people on. You know, I try to develop people. I mean, you mentioned I try to help you with your Linux skills or or whatever thing we're implementing. You know, and I try and do it maybe in a humorous way. I mean, now and again, you know, you use my comments about, um, you know, not everything is rocket science or so on. You know, I mean, I have my sayings and I try and make things a bit humorous because obviously you know you, you can't be serious all the time. I never I never saw you angry to be very honest I, I never <laughs> saw you losing your temper and uh, that is something which is really hard right um, uh, okay it's fine when you're doing a solo job uh, you're all on your own but what if as a manager you are getting some flack for for one of your teammates who are not performing how how to how to deal with tough people because obviously there would be times where you have to deal with people uh, who are not performing or who are you know who are not up to the mark so how do you approach that 
because because i think that's the most difficult part of this job of managing and leading well, that's true that's true i mean so i think there's two angles of it i mean i think probably i manage people which are part of my team or engage with me in a particular way probably reasonably well um but i, I must admit i i'm not a person that handles senior managers probably senior managers probably particularly well sometimes because i do get frustrated when I see that um, managers at senior level don't take the approach to action or pontificate about a decision and stuff like that because I'm quite decisive as a person. It, maybe I do make I make too many decisions. I don't know, but you know I, I'm I'm happy to make a decision and I'm happy to um, admit if it's a wrong decision as well. I mean, I think important and it's important to be to accept that you make good decisions and bad decisions. Now, you mentioned about how do you deal with somebody that's not performing? Well, um, ultimately, you know, you need to try and understand the person, understand what motivates the person, um, understand maybe why the person isn't performing and isn't performing well. I mean, there could be some underlying issue. There could be a home issue. There could be a personal issue. You know, that there might be some health issues. There might be some, dare I say, mental health issues and so on, or maybe stress from, you know, not maybe in work situation, but outside work. It could be work related as well. So you need to try and get, you know, I mean, I know this is jargonistic, but to the root cause, it sounds a bit technical. Um, yeah. and, and try and understand the person. And ultimately, you know, as a manager, you've got to try and understand probably your team as well as the managers you're working for, as well as the senior managers, and try and work out what interests them, you know? Um, I, I think um, I was with uh, one of my ex-managing uh, directors, um, and he gave me, um, I, I think we were going up in a lift in somewhere, and he said to me, could I explain what I do in one minute? You okay. know, and, and, and I thought, my goodness me, that that was initially quite a challenge, and uh, and I think you know those kind of sort of let's call them exercises for a better description, um, are, are very good to help you communicate clearly. So I think there's a number of things. So you understand from a from a difficult engagement, understand the person, understand what motivates them, treat everybody as individuals, yeah, because everybody's different. You got to realize that, and then and even. You know, senior managers are different, and you need to understand how you can engage with them as well. So I think it's you know it's a two way process, um, and 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 then I suppose clear communication. Um, you know, we've got we use things like you know in Jaguar Land Rover about you know customer first behaviors and so on. So one of them is obviously being transparent, being honest, treating people even handedly. So I you know I try and. and you know, I endeavor not to, in work anyway, have any favoritism towards anybody because I think you need to treat everybody evenly, fairly, give everybody equal opportunities and so on. So I, I try and be as even-handed and as fair as I possibly can. And I think, you know, that's how I would like to be treated. So I, I try and treat uh, people in the same way as I like to be treated and you know, right. ho hopefully I've managed to do it in most cases. Um, <laughs> yes. Obviously, I have. I do get a bit. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say angry, but I, I, I do get maybe a little bit um, assertive at times because I think you have to do that and you have to get your point across. But I suppose the 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 trick is is not to make it personal, um, or and and try and keep it professional and and. I hope in most cases I've done that, but I'm sure there are times where I probably overstepped the mark because every again we got to realize everybody's human, and at times you know people let their frustration boil over, especially when they're under pressure. So you know, ultimately again I try and be as professional as I can, but ultimately you know as I said, everybody sometimes oversteps the mark, and you know, and I suppose. The, the thing is, is is to realize and if necessary you can apologize but you know sometimes when you apologize that can be a sign of weakness as well but you know sometimes it's best to say your piece and then once once you've said it as i metaphorically say let's put it in the bin and forget about it let's move on tomorrow's another day
<laughs> no very rightly put i guess i totally totally resonate with that thought uh, i think uh, you need to communicate you need to be patient all those qualities i think combined together uh, would make you work well into a management role right now i think a lot of young audience is listening to you uh, keith and they are uh, this this generation which we call as gen z's uh, who who are who have uh, come after millennials so we are millennials they are gen z's i think they they have learned a lot on youtube they they are very curious about their career how they should shape it uh, a very common misconception i would say is uh, the demarcation between a technical role and a manager management role people tend to think that the moment you go into a management role you'll ruin your career you will be out of touch from technology and uh you might do well in a in in a specific organization where you are but then it won't be able uh, you won't be able to move outside and grow now that that has that is changing with roles like product management wherein you are now being technical as well as managing people uh i i want to ask you uh, if if someone uh, maybe 3 4 years experience in it is listening and he is he feels he could lead right now he feels he could do manage people should he be thinking about it right now or should he be focusing on his uh, technical role and technical profile what what would be your suggestion to him or her i mean the, the funny thing is right you don't need to be a manager to be a leader you know that, yes. that's the point of the day so So obviously, you know, with the uh, the wonders of agile. I mean, agile seems to be an in word at the moment, yeah. and obviously we have new words for new things all the time. But agile seems to be new ways. So but if you take agile for example, you know, agile have this squads kind of approach. So obviously, as a squad leader, there's nothing stopping you managing uh, and taking that that you know those. those kind of decisions or taking that squad on talking to them communicating picking up their ideas moving them forward okay so in my view you don't have to be a manager to show leadership you can show leadership at uh, you know at any time at uh, at any level so in my, you know so so you know and that might be a good way to start you know you can understand if you you know you could either be a team leader or squad or you can lead on sprint so whatever because obviously everybody's got specialisms you know you know everybody's got strengths and weaknesses and you need to understand um how you can um exploit people's strengths and weaknesses now you know if people that are interested in moving on to things like management you know you can start off maybe looking at some project management courses or you know or maybe you could have a look at doing these um i think you can do like three weeks four weeks kind of management courses these days to to start you off and then you can see whether it's something appeals and i think a lot of companies do offer it internally to to their associates yeah, yeah. you can yeah. do that obviously you can do it you know you can do it via um internet course and I mean, obviously in my day when i started you know we didn't have things like the wonders of the internet and we had to <laughs> go and find books uh, amazing books i'm sure i don't know whether you have yeah, yeah yeah i would i would love to <laughs> love to get some books from you on 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 this topic yes yeah i mean you know, i've got i've got some books you know so i mean one of the one of the books i use reg- um very very f- well, still even today um it's called writers in organizations actually it's a, it's a penguin book i don't know whether it's available these days it's quite an old okay book. okay can um, you show it can, can you show it on? i i mean, it might not come through very well though so i don't know okay it. yeah yeah i think yeah it's not coming through well but i i'll, I'll get the details from you i i think it must be so what what is this book all about well basically it 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 talks about all different styles of organizations really and different ty- types of management you know like like meritocracy uh, autocracy different kind of management styles and it but they're very br- i mean I, i like reading but i'm i don't like reading um long books i like to have quite snappy kind of articles that you know straight to the point so and what's good about these they give you different uh, organization styles in, uh-huh. in about 
uh, I think about four or five pages per organization, but it was interesting. It's a sort of different management styles and it's quite interesting. So, so what I are what are some management styles you learned about and which one is some uh, is uh, something which you follow or prefer? Uh, well, well, I mean, I prefer to have that meritocracy, really, where you can treat people sort of equally uh, or ba- in a balanced way, um, and you get the input. You know, I like I, I like that sort of um, sort of flat organization structure in a way because I, I like everybody to be as creative as possible, and I like to give people in my teams anyway as much autonomy. Uh, to learn for themselves obviously they, they can ask me for support and guidance and so on but but i like people to take their own initiative um give the autonomy autonomy and exploit it and use it for the benefit of the organization and of course and of course themselves as well so that's what i that's the kind of approach you know and you know this book i was talking for example it's got you know various things for example it's got the migra you know uh, mcgregor x and y theory it's got uh, different kinds of um, change management as well. So it's 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 a it's a good it's a good little reminder. Sometimes I sit and have a read because it just reminds me about the different you know hygiene factors and all these kind of things that you have to think of as a manager. Because obviously, yep. oh sometimes you know you have to have a, a reminder even you know because to remind my remind people about you know what good management style is. So I always. You know, keep an eye on management books. So the other one I have, for example, is um, uh, I think then this is a uh, an Aubrey Tang book, and it's uh, the title of the book is uh, "Be a Great Manager Now." You know, and it's okay. and again, it's it's like bullet points in a sense. It's it's only a I think it's only a pandemic. I think it's only about uh, two hundred pages, but it's very um, I suppose in its style is like bullet points, so you can mm. easily. Guided and and it's and 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 it just you know and it just you know it just sort of very summarized way of, of reminding yourself about good things of being a manager because obviously as a manager sometimes you know you're short of time that's the big yes. problem these days these days that this day and age and yeah. the big uh, uh, as was request on managers to be innovative to be so uh, how to manage easy. time like uh, this is a very important point you have brought because. As a manager, the only thing which you have a crisis of is time. And uh, sometimes there's also a debate between uh, multitasking or focusing on a single task. But as a manager, you have to multitask. You have to manage time. How how do you do that now? Like Because now your team has grown and you have, I think, a bunch of data scientists and uh, BI <laughs> developers, a lot of, lot of things happening in your portfolio. So how do you manage it? I mean, obviously, that you know, I suppose uh, being a technologist. So, um, first thing I think, going back to one of your earlier points, is that you know, again, in my humble opinion, you know, all managers at all levels should have exposure to, to some technology and have some understanding of the technology used in the business. So, it doesn't matter whether you're from a chief executive down to the lower level um, roles. I think you should have an understanding of the technology used in your organization. I'm not saying in detail in all cases, but at least an understanding if somebody talks in like in JL, like Jagged Land Rover, and they mention Google Cloud Platform, doesn't matter what level in the organization, I, I hope somebody would understand at least what it is, you know. So I, I'm a big believer in that. Um and coming back to your question about managing time. So I tend to use OneNote a lot um, um, and for keeping notes, and I keep various tabs on there for various activities. Uh, that I'm interested in, I and I color code them sort of in you know uh, from you know I use red as a you know something as urgent or whatever that and that sort of and I have and I and I do a bit of work usually and I know maybe this is a sad thing on a Sunday so I I always plan my week in a sense and I plan my team's week um, and I keep you know. Um, I suppose like a Kanban board. I mean, it's not strictly a Kanban board in the true sense, but it just shows me the activities that my team need to do and the prioritization of them mm-hmm. um, and where they fit into the wider picture. So obviously, sometimes, you know, the lower level people don't always realize how that pyramid works and how it builds up. So so what I try to do is, is you know, I suppose the jargon is these days continuous improvement. And I think that's an important thing. And... I try and prioritize the work based on 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 what needs to be delivered, um, and obviously then obviously we just need to think about then 
uh, how we interweave um, some new uh, initiatives as well. So, you know, for example, how do we weave in some machine learning, for example, or artificial intelligence? I'm not saying there'll be something we're going to deliver, but how do you expose team members to the new technology that's coming uh, so that, you know, so we gradually learn over time rather than it being a, a big bang, if like, because, you know, what you don't want to do really is somebody throwing a big, I don't know, let's pick an artificial intelligence pro project at you and you've got to learn from the ground up and nobody knows what it is or a machine learning thing, you know, or certainly. So what, what I try and do is gradually learn the technology, for example, you know, some maybe a new functionality in BigQuery. Let's learn it as we go along so that we can prepare for the next project or the next initiative or, or whatever it is so that we, uh, so we can, and obviously we can then hopefully engage in the wide organization as well and share our knowledge across the business horizontally rather than in silos. So I'm always a big believer about working in the you know wider organization as well and help the organization thrive rather than in, just in the area where I work. You know, I work obviously in the parts area in Jaguar now, but I'm always trying to help other business areas evolve as well. And I think, you know, the latest initiative I put together is having a, a digital and analytics community working together uh, to actually deliver things within the business. Obviously, this isn't a project or anything, but again, this is about getting people to collaborate, getting people to talk and engage together to deliver things that provide business value. You know, so I'm a big believer in getting people to work together and collaborate in a collaborative way. So that's, uh -huh. that's what I enjoy doing. And I love people, bringing people on, if you like, you know, developing people. Um, like, for example, we have squads now in, in this initiative. Um, some of them aren't managers, you know. They 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 are they are um, people at the lower level in the organization, but I think they can do well. Um, and I'm trying to you know gently develop them, uh, yeah. and they don't understand. They probably don't realize what I'm doing, but that, that's what I'm <laughs> so trying. To. I think that's also an important point that as a manager or as a leader, uh, you need to be updated on technology like what latest technologies are coming you have to keep your organization uh make your organization aware of what's happening in the tech world so as a manager uh that's one part so if you have come from a technology background this is was this will be the most fascinating part of your job to understand what's new what's coming what's what's new in in cloud and how i can get this new technology into my team because you are a technical guy but apart from that there are different sections or different verticals with uh, with whom you have to work in so take for example budgeting forecasting managing your finances and working with the it governance pmo team and then uh, for example working with the board members or cxos so while you are a technical person how you kind of gauged all these things uh, over time like how you approached it because for me that's the most tedious part as a technologist you kind of hate process or lengthy or cumbersome processes which delay things but then in in organizations which are enterprise level organizations and not a startup uh, i think these these processes are put in place for some special reason so how how you kind of got through all that and learned it well, actually, my wife taught me a valuable lesson. Okay. And it's an interesting one in the sense that um, we used to work in the same building, but she was doing a totally different job to me. And at that point, I'd transitioned to, uh, let's call it IT uh, in the old days. Uh -huh. And um, and I used to go down to her office and I used to say, for example, you know, VME is not available this morning. And uh, what's VME? Yeah, uh, well, I, well, this is the lesson, right? So, okay. this is the lesson. so, so, so uh, and again, um, again, at another point, I'd go down and say the same thing. And then, uh, when my wife started going out together, she, you know, she said, you know, over a sandwich or whatever it was one day, she said, Do you mind if I ask you a question? And I said, Not at all. She said, You know, you come to our office and you say VME's down. Do you know, nobody knows what you mean, but what is VME? And like you've just asked, well, you know, v v v VME was virtual machine environment and, and that was a mainframe. So I said to her, well, you know, the mainframe's down. And she said, well, why don't you just say the mainframe's down? And I said, well, 
because it's VME. I mean, well, he said, we don't know what that is, but we, we understand what mainframe is. Mm. So, that's to, so, so that taught me a valuable lesson, really, in the, about communication, because you need to understand the audience that you're talking to. So I try, and I don't know if I'm successful, but I try to moderate my language. So if I'm talking to a technical person, uh, like yourself, for example, Anshul, I'll I'll talk hopefully in a technical way about, you know, whether it's about maybe TCP IP or, you know, um, firewalls or whatever else, you know, or maybe Google Cloud Platform and stuff like this, and about, you know, virtual machine environments and whatever else. So obviously we talk maybe fairly technical. But then, you know, if I were talking to you about maybe as a maybe a, a, a maybe higher level manager, I would try maybe and moderate my language and maybe say, well, you know, for example, I mean, have you heard, for example, of, you know, Google and or, you know, cloud environments? And depending on the response, I would then moderate to say, well, oh, if the person said, oh, yeah, I, I've heard about cloud environments, but I might not understand what they are, but can you explain that? And then I would try and explain it. So I think what I've tried to do over the years is probably uh, try and understand the audience that I'm dealing with um, and then moderate or maybe communicate in, 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 in an appropriate level of, of technical understanding. So like I said, if it's too technical people, it's too technical audience, I would ho hopefully communicate in a technical way. If it's about project management I, and the audience were project managers, obviously I'd use project management language. So I try and, you know. So do you, do you keep learning? How you keep yourself updated? Uh, because obviously learning should be an essential part of all this, how, uh, how you would stay abreast of what's happening in the world and what's happening and and when you have to talk in a certain language with certain people then you need to know their language as well so yeah. is it is it like you are a continuous learner and how do you keep yourself updated well actually you know you never stop learning do you you know yeah um, it, 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 i mean i learn every day um it, you know i uh, small things even you know from from everybody you know i mean i, I you know i from a, it doesn't matter what level in the organization you know somebody can you can pick something up from everybody, you know. I, I, and I think is is that I think you need to be. How can I put this? You mean you must never be big headed, really. I think and know and think you know everything because invariably, guess what? You won't. There's always somebody that knows better than you, knows more than you, more intelligent than you, etc. So I think you need to be just aware that you know you that. You're you're continually learning, and I continue learn. So I've got you know a pile of books in front of me here, from management books, for example. Um, I've got another management book there. What have I got here? I've got you know I've got here, for example, um, a data warehouse toolkit, for example, you know, written by Ralph Kimball, for example. Yes, yes, uh, iconic, that, you know, iconic book. <laughs> and, for and anyone then, who's coming from BI data analytics world, well, <laughs> iconic book. Yeah. But then and then you know another book on my desk here is a, a Prince Agile book, you know. So and then I've got a book just the other side of me, Togaf, you know. So you know, so I think you just need to have these tool sets, you know. I I mean <laughs> I suppose I look at it very metaphorically as this. Um you know, uh, obviously most people have got some kind of toolkit for doing DIY. You know, where you've got your screwdrivers, your hammers, you've got electric drill and whatever else. And I, and I and I say the same thing for people working in technology or management or whatever. You know, you have your toolkit. And and obviously, <clears throat> whatever job you're doing, you know, you must, you know, um, have your that nice. toolkit out and use the appropriate tool. So you know, I mean, the other way you say, you know, the appropriate, the appropriate hat on your head. You know, so, yes. so and you have to adapt and be flexible. You know, and as a manager, probably you have to be more flexible in your role these days than anywhere else. Because obviously, as a manager these days, you have to have multi skill sets. Because you know, you have to manage people. Then really, these days you need to have some understanding of technology. Um, you know, for example, you know, we, we have Microsoft 365. There's lots of little tools in there. Like I talk about, you know, OneNote, for example, you've got Microsoft Planner. You know, there's all these little tools and really you, you just need to use them to help yourself, really. You know, as a manager, try and make your job as easy as you can. But ultimately, though, you can't get away from managing people. doesn't matter mm. what you're doing. 
because even when you're talking technology, you have to manage people, you have to uh, and let them possibly um, give the understanding what the technology is, what the capability is. Sometimes you have to have a hard that discussion. You know, they want to um, use the technology in a particular way and you have to sort of um, give the message that unfortunately the technology can't do that kind of thing. So, you know, it's very easy to give the message when it's positive, you know, when, you know, say for example, you're giving somebody a pay rise, right? And you're whatever. So very easy conversation, right? But it's not so easy when you're saying actually, you're not getting a bonus this year, or you didn't get that job, or a, even a more difficult conversation, which I've had to had have I had to have some years ago with somebody, is that we're going to make me be made redundant. Now those conversations are very difficult and get sometimes very personal. So you need that's where you need to be quite clever, think on your feet, and 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 also prepare in advance. That's the important thing as well. If you're going to have these difficult discussions, you need to be pre pre prepared in advance. And again, I would advise anybody, you know, and I do this as well. When I have, before I have meetings with my team or, or meetings with senior people in particular, you know, I always do some preparation. I try and say, um, I suppose, try and second guess what type of questions are going to be asked, especially when there's a difficult situation, so that at least you can go in and be prepared, you know, of, or if there's a difficult technology conversation, try and get some information from your project manager or, or your implementation. So when you go and meet the senior manager or the director, whatever level, you're at least prepared so that, you know, you're not, you're not really caught out when somebody says, oh, you know, oh, I heard about this problem, I'm sure. And then you go, oh, oh I didn't know anything about it. So, you know, the more prepared you are in all cases, so that's from yeah. interviewing people, uh, for when you're doing those appraisals or reviews, or when you're having different discussions about performance, do the preparation, do the homework, and go in prepared. And again, if you're having technology conversations with, you know, uh, whether it's Google or Microsoft, again, do some homework so you understand a bit about the technology. So, so you they they're not they can't pull the wool over your eyes. So you're prepared, and then you can have those professional conversations without having getting too much emotion behind it. Yeah, very very valid point because. Having tough conversation needs preparation. And sometimes we fall into this risk of becoming a people pleaser uh, because of <laughs> because of uh, our nature of uh, trying to manage people. We always want to be in good terms. But there would come a point where as a manager, you have to talk tough. But then if you are prepared and you know the points on which you are talking, it makes uh, your job easier. Uh, Keith, uh, I think uh, uh, I've got a lot uh, from this session. I think uh, as we come towards the end of this podcast, I, I really want to focus on a couple of things. First of all, what you're doing uh, in your team right now, technology. Uh, so uh, because because we need to talk technology a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you love data, you love BI. So what's happening? Okay, well, well, the, the the things in my team at the moment is we're working uh, probably on probably what most people would call a boring thing. Uh, it's about data governance. So we're okay. trying to trying to ensure we have good uh, ownership around the data and good stewardship. Um, so that's one of the sort of not so much exciting things. But I am a big believer that for all systems, you should have you know, good ownership from the technology point of view. So I think we call them, you know, the new jargon is product managers. Everything's a project manager, product manager these days. Uh, but so, so I suppose we, we need good product managers in the business as well as in IT. So in both in both sides of it, um, we need to have good governance and clarity. You know, I suppose to talk jargon, a, a good racy or equivalent, depending on what uh, methodology of project management you're into. Um, so, but uh, so, so I mean, I like I like racy because it, it's very clear to me what that is, and most people would understand that anyway. So that's responsible. I, I made a video recently on, and the topic was five key data challenges uh, for today, and I I. I ranked all the five and then uh, it was about data quality and all and at the end I said for me the biggest challenge is data governance because uh, right now you have a plethora of technologies like BigQuery, Google Cloud, Amazon, all those uh, 
uh, you know cloud providers give you massive technologies to store data but as far as managing your data is concerned it will never be anyone else's ownership it will be your ownership and uh, we always know how a data lake or a data warehouse can quickly become a data swamp if uh, you don't have proper data governance in place so totally resonate with with that and uh, i think uh, apart from that i also wanted to understand from you that uh, in in your in your team do you think uh, there is a kind of a collision or how should i put it because see you have come from a traditional waterfall background okay now everything is moving agile not not now it has been for years now but considering you have been uh, a part of both the worlds do you think uh, waterfall still holds any value or do you think everything is agile now <laughs> Oh goodness! Okay, now that could be another hour. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's why I I I kept I I held back that question at the last so that because I knew if I ask it uh, at the beginning it will take the whole session. But but yeah, maybe we'll have another podcast specially on this one. So not to worry. But if you could just share a few words on it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, agile or waterfall? Interesting. Um, now, obviously, you know, I've been doing agile kind of projects because obviously I'm a, I, I've been in software development for kind of thing for many years and agile compute continuous improvement, all those iterative kind of methodologies I have used many times. And I'm a big fan of agile, in fact, because I think agile gives that way of providing a jargon, you know, minimum viable product and all those evolutions. And, and it's and it's a great way for software development. Um, now, whether you can use the same thing in business to do projects, I'm also I'm I'm a bit I'm a, I'm not so sure, but I'm sure you can. I've used it in certain things, but again, in software development, it lends itself very easily. Um, uh, but but again, you know, you can again, it's like everything. And I when you mentioned about reading books and courses and things like that, you have to be flexible. Um, and I'm using the, I'm avoiding the word agile there. Can you say I'm flexible because you can. As a professional, you need to maybe work in a sort of hybrid way. You know, there's no right and wrong way of, in my view, of doing things. You have to use the most appropriate way. So sometimes, you know, I've I've molded um, a bit of a agile and waterfall where appropriate. You know what I mean? So hybrid. You can do it where you can do your sprints and things like that. Um, but then whether whether it's a hybrid or whether it's a bit of a difficult question, really. But mm. but again. I would use the most appropriate way of delivering something because ultimately the most important thing that you deliver a good product, you know, and that the product is of good quality and you deliver it on time within budget. I know it's a bit jargonistic, sorry about that, but but that, that's the ultimate thing, isn't it? So, yes. you know, a, so if you can de deliver a defect-free product uh, via good change management where all your... Um, let's call them customers, users, stakeholders are satisfied with the product and the product works and doesn't break to me. doesn't matter what kind of methodology you use to me, that, that's a successful way. And again, it's important to learn, you know, from the lessons, you know. So um, in many companies I've worked for, you know, there's a big thing when we run a new project, let's learn from the lessons and, and let's take them on board so we don't repeat the failures and things of the previous. But I've never seen that successfully done, really, because ultimately I find that the same issues, same problems recur over and over again. So, uh, I mean, that's always to me a, a bit of a disappointment that we don't learn from our previous failures because really we should learn and we should improve because it should be, I mean, I'm a big fan of continuous improvement and that agile all over, you know? Yes, yes. And, 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 and continuous improvement to me is just not, you know, systems, but it's people as well. And, uh, and, and you know, it, I think the only, the only best lessons that I've ever used in the post office because they tried to mitigate failures they had um, I will admit, I will admit not probably as successful as they should have, but but they did try. But in other areas of the business when I worked, unfortunately, um, I, I keep seeing the same um, let's call them issues or faults recur. So it's a bit of a shame that is that we don't seem to 
improve. But again, I just to summarize, I would say, <clears throat> you know, use the most appropriate method methodology that's available, and just so I think delivering the delivery. product, delivering the product is the key. How you do it is your prerogative; it's your choice. Uh, some at some places, I think most of the places, if you are running uh, agile, uh, you you are not sure of the end product. Obviously, that helps. But yeah, I I totally I agree that you need to be flexible. Uh, which brings me to the last question, last question of this podcast, which is uh, one advice which you would want to give to any any fresher or any five year, six years experience uh, IT professional who wants to lead, who wants to manage. And secondly, from your whole career, one mistake which you you have made, which you would not want anyone else to make if he or she is listening in your in in the career yeah. yeah yeah so 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 obviously um my advice to everybody is be open minded um uh, you know don't be closed minded um uh, listen and understand i think also is a clear a good thing you know there are many people um that obviously listen but do they fully understand and comprehend what people are saying. So I think it's important to actively listen and to everything that's said and and, and be present. And I think that's an important thing. Uh, that's, that's, that's the advice I would give there. Um, and, and, and you know, move gradually as well. D don't always rush to get, you know, to the next level. Um, do it gradually, uh, learn. Uh, but obviously, I would advise be humble, and and engage with your team and and I invite my team to challenge me as well so it's important that you get that full engagement as well because again as I said earlier nobody knows everything and you can always have some great advice from your team so don't be afraid to be challenged um, but obviously ultimately I think you've got to be strong enough to make some decisions yourself you know because you can listen to great advice but ultimately you've got to take responsibility for making the decisions yourself that's what I would say um the, the the mistake yeah i will uh yeah so um so uh, <laughs> i was implementing um two uh well i was implementing a new uh linux box actually and um and i was decommissioning one and put getting one up and running fully uh and i was copying data and and then i was removing the old files and uh, and I was doing sort of multiple tasks, really, uh, you know. And then, uh, as I as and I think it was on a Friday evening or Friday afternoon, in fact. And um, the phone went, you know. And I thought, oh, the phone is gone. So obviously, picked up the phone, had a conversation, went back to finish my job, and I just did RM minus RF, which is obviously deleting everything. Um, in that, and I realized after I pressed the command, I did it on the wrong server. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't say that quite, but I said more. Things. And I, I, I used to play a lot of squash then, and I had a couple of squash balls um, in my in, the, and I threw them out across the room. I said, "Oh, there!" And then, and then, um, I ended up um, until about one, two, two a.m. in the morning recovering the system. Um, so the lesson is be very careful when you're doing anything and just double check occasionally that you're doing the right thing so that so you know obviously i'm talking about a system but again you it, know, it, it those, can apply it to anything yes so i would say j just now and again have those checks and balances to avoid like i like i inadvertently had a disaster so that's yeah a, that's a, yeah and that's and that's a true story, I'm sure, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> what what a session. I think I learned a lot. And thanks for your time, Keith. It's always a privilege. I hope uh, we'll have more sessions like these on different topics uh, in, in coming future. I, I think there's a lot of, lot many pot, podcasts in you. Uh, just uh, it, This is just a beginning. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for your time. And I really think that this would be really useful for the young generation of IT professionals. So thank once you, again, Anshul. once again, Keith, thank you so much. Thank you. for Thank coming. you, Anshul. Thank you. thank you for the invite. And it's been great talking to you. Have a nice thank day. you. Thank you so much, Keith.